Welcome back to Sunday Vibes 1 and oh, still no Chris Hamill. He's off enjoying the London sun at the moment. So instead, we got Patrick Van Straat and, and we've called up Zach Jalab. Jalab, how are you, my friend? How's the ankle? Uh, it's good. It's good. Walking on it now. You know, played football Monday. I'm, uh, I'm back to it. I'm back to mm. it. I'm sorry I let the boys down on, on Tuesday, five aside. Yeah, Zach was meant to be playing five aside with us. Uh, we lost 4 3. He twisted his ankle the day before. Couldn't play. Massive blow. We still haven't won a game. Oh, <laughs> how, uh, how are you, mate? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah, nothing to report. All right, let's just crack straight on with the show then, shall we? Uh, the first question, the main question, was sent in by Declan Hahir3. He says, Are Bayern still favourites for the Champions League after the Lewandowski injury? So, what I thought we'd do today is predict each outcome from each game of the Champions League until we predict our winning side. Okay? So let's start with Bayern versus PSG. It's the repeat of the final. Pato, you're not that impressed by Bayern Munich, particularly without Lewandowski. Uh, no. I mean, like, I'm glad that you've actually complicated the question because the simple answer to the first question, are Bayern still favourites? It's like, no, of course not. Yeah. Bayern haven't been favourites for months. Man City have to be favourites. Um, Bayern, Bayern. Uh, when when I hear people say stuff like "Oh, Bayern are still the best team in Europe," or "Man City are the second best team in Europe," I think, okay, this is how you can tell who does and doesn't watch the Bundesliga. Bayern have not been particularly dominant in Germany this season. They weren't the best side at the beginning of the season. Uh, Leipzig and Dortmund were better. Um, they're still not that far ahead, and they do play Leipzig this weekend. Um, that would have happened by the time this goes mm. out. But there's been a decline for them across the board this season, despite the fact that Lewandowski has actually been somehow even better than he was last year. I think Lewandowski <laughs> is now on now on like 41 goal involvements. In, he was on in course to set the record, wasn't it? On course to set the record, the most goals scored in a Bundesliga season's history. I think 40, but obviously this injury is going to you know, scupper those plans. He might, he might well still do it. I think he's on 35 at the moment, which yeah. is like, I, th I think the second best in Europe is like 23 or something. It's absolutely <laughs> obscene. But I mean, but the attack is still worse than last year. Last year, I think they were producing about 2.7 expected goals a game. This season, they're down to 2.3. The defense has got a lot worse. The defense is really my issue with Bayern. Mm. The defense has really, like, I think by, by expected goals, it's about the sixth best in Germany, which is pretty, pretty shocking. And by actual goals conceded, I think it's about the fifth best. Yeah, they conceded so that's 35. Yeah, I mean, more than they did in the whole of last season. Like, that is a substantial mm. drop-off. And um, and obviously, they're still good enough to beat pretty much anyone on their day. But given the fact that a lot of teams have caused defensive problems for them in the Bundesliga, I think that they're going to have some serious issues in the Champions League. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily going to be decisive in this particular fixture, because I haven't been that impressed by PSG either. Um, I don't think that they're the best team in France at the moment. Um, I think they've been pretty poor, actually, since Pochettino's taken over. But um, I think Bayern will probably probably get through this. I mean, I, I don't really know. I suppose without Lewandowski, it's hard to tell. But, um, but are Bayern favourites for the Champions League? No. All right. So if we were to get a prediction out of you then, Pat, for the Bayern versus PSG leg of the... Um quarterfinals what are you, what are you saying because you know Neymar he's, he's going to be forced back I'd imagine he's probably going to be rushed back and will play yeah oh god it is really hard to tell I mean if Neymar's fit actually maybe maybe I, I'll contradict myself and maybe I do favor PSG a little bit oh because um, because I really do think Bayern's defense is is genuinely pretty bad um yeah, I might say PSG to go through. Oh, wow! But on like a but on like away goals or something, you know, yeah, like it's not gonna, it's not going to be straightforward. Yeah, I, I think I think that Bayern Bayern I'm not very impressed by them. Um, but Lewandowski is like the difference maker. If Lewandowski's not there, it's quite hard to be particularly convinced about Bayern right now. Yeah, I wonder I wonder who they'll play up top. And Nabry, what formation yeah, they'll Nabry. play? Like, will well, they exactly. just stick Chupo Moting up there? Do they oh. just go for, for the Chupo Moting vibe? Do they play Nabry as like yeah. a as a striker and Thomas Muller just off him? Jalab, what's your thoughts on this fixture? Pat's gone PSG, um, which is a shocker, buying out early doors. 
Well, well, if you think about the final that happened, it was actually a lot closer than I think um, people people may remember. Uh, PSG had chances. I, I, I specifically remember an Mbappe one um, that that he that he put wide, and it was only only one nil in the end. Um, and so, if if it follows the same route, I mean, it could could be a completely different uh, kind of game. But if it follows the same route, it's going to be close. Um, but yeah, missing missing Lewandowski is like Real Madrid with when Ronaldo is there, missing Cristiano Ronaldo, Barcelona missing Messi. Uh, they're they're absolute goal machine up top, and whoever you put there isn't going to be replicating the exact same as Lewandowski. There's there's no chance. Um, you can, you can't buy someone. I mean, you can buy Haaland probably. That, that's about as close as you can get. Um, but yeah, I think PSG with Neymar back may be slightly edge it for me. Um, obviously, they've wow. got a different manager to who they had. To who they had um, last last time they faced off, it was two four last time. It's now Pochettino, and as Pat said, it's not been too great under Poch um, in the league. Champions League's not too bad. And I think back to the Barcelona game, the PSG Barcelona game. If the PSG side come out and play like they did in the first leg, I think they'll I think they'll win both legs. The issue is that second leg when they played Barcelona, Barcelona should have had no chance of being able to probably to possibly qualify, and PSG gave them that, that chance. Defensively, they weren't great at all. Um, and yes, part, if part of that is Dembele can score a goal. Oh my god! But part of that as well is Messi. Like Messi was ridiculous on that night. The goal from outside the box, consistently creating chances. Um, and you're right. If, if Dembele could could <laughs> could shoot um, in, in, out of his three chances, then uh, it yeah. could have been it could have been a Bayern Munich Barcelona um, semi final. But I then also think to that first leg. And yes, Barca were poor as well. Um, Mbappe, like Kylian Mbappe, at the moment seems to be going through a in the Champions League, especially, kind of come, going through like a, a coming of age, realizing that now oh, this is a, a tournament that he needs to kind of uh, put his name into, especially now with Haaland also doing the same for for, for Borussia Dortmund, who we'll get on to later. Um, but for no Levin, no Lewandowski, if there's no Lewandowski in either leg, I think PSG might might just edge it. It'll be a great game. It'll be a great game. But if Lewandowski say comes back for the second leg, maybe they rush him. Who knows? Um, it could be. He's not going to be back, mate. At all. No, he's not going to be back. Not okay. with strained knee ligaments in three okay. weeks. Well, so there you go. I'll, 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 uh, I'll say PSG then. All right. I'll play devil's advocate. I think Bayern Munich go through in this fixture. Um, I've watched PSG a, a few times now in the Champions League. I obviously, wasn't very impressed at all by them um, in the second leg when when Barca drew 1-1, but they might have taken the foot off the gas. Like you said, Messi, obviously very, very impressive. Neymar um, was missing as well. Uh, they were really good in the first leg against Barcelona, and I think that effectively summarises what this PSG team is all about. Like Even against Manchester United, um, were terrible, absolutely horrendous in Paris against Manchester United when we <laughs> beat them, and then turned up at Old Trafford. And I just don't think they can afford to have a performance like the second leg at Barcelona or the home leg against Manchester United um, against Bayern in either game. And I think they will have one of them. Um, I think Bayern Munich will just use their experience and their guard to, to win this one. I'm, I'm backing Bayern to go through sort of like 3-2, 3-1, something like that as an aggregate score. Um, I, I know that Lewandowski misses massive, but... You know, Nabry, Leroy Sane, Combe and all been fantastic in the Champions League. I think Thomas Muller will cause that PSG defence that I'm not that impressed by either. Quite a lot of problems and I just... This PSG just always bottle it. Always but you also thinking, got I always the, think PSG bottle it. In the Barcelona second leg, like all Barcelona both legs, they didn't have Neymar then. Like Neymar will be back this time yeah. as well. Like, realistically, it won't be Moise Keane up top. It'll be uh, who who was okay as well. Um, it'll be Neymar yeah. and Mbappe and that's Cardi a huge that's a huge dub for them. When you say PSG always bottle yeah, it, at what do. point do we at what point do we say that's no longer true? I mean, they got to the final last season. They didn't bottle it against Barcelona this season. Like, what do they have to win the Champions League? For, for you to say they're no longer bottlers? I think it's the manner in which they exit the competition, for me. Um, like I know they got to the I, final yeah, last year Yeah, I know they got to the final, nil. but I think that's, that's so far the exception to them bottling it. And they've been under this incredible, incredibly uh, money-centric ownership for how many years now? Like a, a long old time. Um, I just, I, I always fancy PSG, even if they're 3-0 up first leg, second leg, I always fancy the away team. Even when Barcelona came to um, the Parc de France 
most recently. And what was it, 4-1 down, were they? Or 4-0 down mm. or something like that? I, after the first 20 minutes, I was still thinking PSG are going to throw this away. And they didn't, admittedly. But if Usman Dembele had scored two of those chances early doors, I think it would have all gone to pop for him. I'm just not convinced about their mentality at all. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but equally, you could make that argument about the time they went out you know, in that game um, against Barcelona a few years ago, like if the referee hadn't just like blatantly, corruptly given two penalties for absolutely nothing, they'd have gone through. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, like I agree. I agree. Like I, I, I thought that actually they were pretty lucky um, to go in at half time in that game level um, against Barcelona. Um, but on the other hand, I think Barcelona have really, really improved um, over the last couple of months. And I don't know. Like, I, I guess it's just like when they win, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, they got a little bit lucky. And when they don't win, everyone's like, well, it's PSG bottling it. And it just kind of makes me think like that bottling it is just like a catch all term for like when PSG lose. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. It is, it is slightly more of a catch all term. Um, definitely. But it's just because they've historically been turned over in, in second leg. <laughs> yeah. you know, like no, I understand why. Time. I understand why. Um, but... I think um, I'll go Bayern Munich here. The other two boys are going PSG. Um, let's move on to Manchester City versus Borussia Dortmund then, the potential team they will face at the semi-final. And this is just a no-hoper for Dortmund, isn't it? I just don't see any uh, way in which Manchester City don't absolutely batter Borussia Dortmund. Do. The only the only thing I would maybe put in there is like the like Pep over uh, complicating it in some way, like he may have mm. done in previous uh, previous um, yeah. Champions League campaigns. Yeah, good point. Where he he's thought so much about Halan, maybe I don't know if Sancho's back by that point from injury, but so much he overthinks it and ends up playing a formation that City just have not played before, or putting players in positions that they've not played before. Normally. Surely he won't do that this year. Surely you would, he won't do that. This you year. would think you'd think he learned. You'd think he'd learn, but you would have thought he'd learn last year, right? And maybe the year before that, where he continuously kind of uh, does it and he, he overthinks the game. I mean, it's going to be a, a fun game for possibly what could be Haaland's next next club, and and that is the, the factor, right? Erling Braut Haaland. He he is the only hope Dortmund have, maybe, and maybe Sancho as well, if if he is fit of um, trying to cause somewhat of an upset. Uh, but yeah, realistically, you, you, City are the favourites, not just for this, but for the whole Champions League. And, and you would kind of put them to to, to dominate this game and, and win by maybe three, maybe four. Yeah, I, I would be massively surprised. Like Borussia Dortmund have been so underwhelming in the Bundesliga as well this season. Um, I just, I think, he, like even if Haaland has a world, I just don't. Yeah, see defensively, them being able to stop Man bad. City scoring goals. What do you think, Pat? Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, <laughs> Haaland put Dortmund, what, 2-0 up against Bayern the other day and it just didn't matter because mm. the defence was so poor. Mm. Like, I think there's a way to beat Man City. You know, I think everything has to go right for you. But the way to beat Man City is not a way that I think Dortmund can play. I don't think they can go out and do what Man United did against City, you know, last month or whatever it was. Yeah. I, I just don't think I just don't think they're capable of doing it with, it, with this current defence. Now, obviously, it's possible... That, you know, like the game is tight and Haaland manages to put one in the top corner and like, you know, Sterling misses from a yard out. Like all these things, all these things are totally possible. But over two legs, I think it's a little bit difficult. I mean, Dortmund, Dortmund were better against Sevilla than I expected because Sevilla in a way are like a bad man city. They're like, they're quite a slow defensive possession side you know they want to build possession really really slowly and and I wondered how that would how that would do against Dortmund and Dortmund were just able to rip through them on the counter the problem is City's attack is just a lot better than Sevilla's and so I don't think that the quality of Dortmund's counter attack is ultimately going to matter that much plus I think having guys like Cancelo to cover yeah. or mm. even Carl Walker like I just I I, I think like Holland is amazing, but City's defense this season has been like staggeringly good. So I, I'm just not sure I see it. Yeah, and like I mean, when we were watching the was it Munch and Gladbach they played at the round of um, 16. Yeah, it, it felt like a massive disparity in quality between those two sides, didn't it? It really felt huge. And obviously Munch and Gladbach have had a horrendous season um, in the Bundesliga, which doesn't help them, but. I, I can see it going a similar way with Borussia Dortmund. Man City just totally dominant on the ball and Dortmund struggling to counter like Pat said. So we all agree that Man City go through here between between yeah, these two? for sure. So in your two's tie, you believe it will be Man City PSG. Who wins that? Man City, City. PSG. Yeah, uh, City. Again, if Pep doesn't overcomplicate okay. it. Yeah, okay. 
Like, what I will say is that PSG on the break are, are extremely dangerous with Kylian Mbappe and, and, and Neymar can't be bothered to track back at the best of times. <laughs> so that might suit PSG a little bit more. They could potentially well, play a little bit more Man United-esque as we did at the Etihad. Well, and Zach is just totally right. Like, I mean, like you can't, you can't legislate for the possibility that Pep Guardiola just does some, like <laughs> s- some weird like Wallace and Gromit, mm. shit. John Stones, and, and like yeah. The, yeah, and the whole team just like absolutely falls apart. Like he, he has had this tendency. Okay, so you're saying Manchester City get to the final from this side of the draw, then beating PSG in a realistic I think, world. Yeah, I think Bayern Munich beat Man City in the semis and get to the final yet again. Um, Wow. Good Lewandowski games there. There's some, there'll be some great stage. games. So I'll say Bayern Munich through this <coughs> side of the draw. Let's go to the other side of the draw, then, Jalab. This is all about you, mate. Porto oh, versus my. Chelsea. Comfy, is it? Uh, no, no. I don't I don't think with the way Chelsea played their football and, and the fact that we've yet to prove in a two-call game that we can kind of put three or four past a team, I don't think it will be comfy full stop in any, in any of the games. Um, especially, oh, like... The Porto side ain't, ain't great, but they they were managed to to show they managed to beat Juventus and 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 although yes they were a man Juventus down, are terrible people. though, mate. Yeah, but but Juventus they, the players that they have should be beating Porto, so they they're obviously doing something right, especially when they go ten men down. Um, and and defensively they they look okay. Pepe somehow is still playing really really well. Um, Malang Sar, I think he came on as well. He's he's Chelsea's lonely boy. He can actually play against us in the Champions League too. Um, and, and but yeah, look, in a realistic world, we should be beating them. I just worry that this is where it might it might hurt us. The fact that we still have yet to kind of put a team to the sword and and, and go maybe three. Like if we win the first leg three nil, brilliant. I've just not seen Chelsea do that yet, and that's my my one concern. Because even if you go uh, one nil it up, it just it's not as you know going into the second leg, you're still worrying constantly, and um, we need to make sure we take our chances. But yeah, I, I believe, I do hopefully believe that uh, we'll, we'll beat Porto for sure. Yeah, I have to say, I thought you were excellent against Atletico Madrid in both legs. I think I think Tuchel got both games yeah. absolutely spot on. Um, so I will agree with you. I think Chelsea, very dominant win against Porto here. Um, what I did want to ask you, Jalab, is who plays as your striker against Porto? Do you start Giroud? <laughs> Mate, um... God, the other, I'll give you the lottery numbers after as well. Jesus, um, it's tough. It really, it really is tough. Um, I, I, if I knew more about Porto, because I, I don't know enough about Porto, it would be a bit uh, easier to maybe say like whether we whether we can play on the break a bit more. Um, I think I wouldn't be surprised if you see Kai there, mate. If you see Kai as maybe the striker Ooh. again, like, I mean, it works. It works as well as it works. It works against Atletico Madrid. Um, didn't necessarily work as well against Leeds, but we should have we should have mm. won that game as well. Um, but you'll you'll see Werner, you'll see Werner in that starting eleven. Like as much as sure Werner has missed chances, the one yesterday saw him trending on Twitter um, against North Macedonia, and, it, and it's bad. It is rough. Uh, he's it's a guy a going. Mate. He's <laughs> guy going. A whiffer, you he's, ever see. he's a guy going through a really really rough year, um, to be quite honest. However. Him playing down that left flank really helps us. His pace and like mm. his, his, his like sure he's not scoring loads of goals, but he is actually contributing a lot um, to our attack, even from you know assists or, or second assists. Um, so so I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a Kai, um, a Kai Werner and and, and Ziyech. Ziyech recently seems to have come into a decent patch of form too, which is which is good to see now. And and uh, yeah, so I'd say. Say so probably Kai um, up top, but like if Giroud started there, like I wouldn't be surprised if Tammy was fit. Maybe him. It's really just like you, you can't guess a Tuchel eleven, and it's not even that. It's like a Tuchel eleven isn't just one change. It's about four. Like it's ridiculous. You never know who's yeah. playing in what position ever. Jorginho's back as well. Mason Mount will be back, which is which is good to see. All right, so you're going Chelsea to sneak through. I agree, Chelsea uh, a bit more comfortably than than Jalab maybe. Uh, he's being quite modest. Um, Pato, thoughts on this one? I think this is the easiest call of all. Like, I mean, it's just a, it's just a walk through for Chelsea. I agree. Like they, it it doesn't matter that if the attack isn't like firing on all cylinders yet. Like they, Atleti couldn't do anything. Oh, defensively, were against Chelsea. Yeah. Like it's 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 just total control from the Chelsea side at the moment. And basically, the way I see Porto even scoring is like a pen out of nowhere. 
corner maybe. Somebody just banging, someone banging one in the top corner from long range, you know, either from a free kick or yeah. open play. Yeah. Or somehow holding out and getting to a penalty shootout. Those, those are the ways that I can see them doing it. Because it doesn't matter if Chelsea can't put one in the back of the net. And I think they will manage to over the course of 180 minutes. It's just the fact that unless something crazy happens with Porto, um, I just don't really see how they score. And also, you know, yes, like the attack hasn't been amazing yet. But there are so many incredible individuals in it. Um, I certainly won't play Giroud. But there are so many like incredible players in it. And at some point, the attack is going to start working. Like, it's not going to like be bad forever. Everywhere Tuchel's gone, he's created a good attack. So I think it's just a matter of time, and, and it might well be. Hoping Golo Kante's fit as well, because he pulled his hamstring with France, which was uh, yeah. worrying. Because he blow. Because he's go been brilliant. Bro, Golo Kante under Tuchel's been... Um, it's uh, absolutely rejuvenated. It, it's ridiculous yeah. seeing him. He's just just turned thirty as well. I think this uh, past week or so. But uh, pff, against Atletico Madrid, that man, I don't know. He, he's ba- he's really turned on his he like back tw- to his best. He yeah. looks like he's turned on his like twenty sixteen form. Um, and, and and added the the ability of running forward constantly as well. It's 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 ridiculous. I've, I've I get lost for words sometimes. The interceptions, just that that run in the ninety like ninety second minute, wherever it was against the, against Atletico Madrid to 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 just drag the defender was unbelievable, ridiculous. All right, so we'll stick Chelsea going through comfortably in there. The other tie. This is an interesting one, isn't it? Madrid versus Liverpool. Because mm. Madrid have actually picked up a little bit of form domestically. They've only lost once since November the twenty eighth. <laughs> Um, but still haven't looked at their best. Still six points off Atletico Madrid, and anyone who watched them in the Champions League group stages can see that they do have large problems. You know, their group was, I think, Gladbach, Inter, and Shakhtar, and they kind of really scraped through. I remember those games against Shakhtar particularly being very troublesome. Having said that, very impressive against Atalanta, very professional um, in a game that I think a lot of people thought they might slip up in. A lot of people were saying, you know, this could be one for Atalanta here, but Zidane got the job done and Karim Benzema is still in fantastic form. So, a Liverpool team that are slightly porous at the back and injury prone against an out of form, well, a semi out of form Real Madrid side. Pat, how do you see this going? You're right, it's a tough one to call. I mean, I'm less impressed by Real Madrid in the previous round purely because they played, what, a third of that of that two-legged tie against 10 men like yeah. i mean the first fixture like that's that's a big advantage um and the thing is like when you do have 10 men what this team is amazing at and has always been amazing at is just passing through you mm. i mean like having what well, there there are significant downsides to having guys like you know modric and, and cross still being key parts of your midfield but when you've got the ball it's amazing. Yeah. Like, you can you can pass through basically anyone. Yeah. Um, so Liverpool's press is going to need to be on point in this game. On the other hand, I don't think Real Madrid are that good. Like I think they're like pretty mediocre. I, I, Benzema is obviously good, but like you know he's not Lewandowski or someone. Mm. He's not, and he's certainly not a Messi. Like he's not going to beat three guys and score. Um, when I look at Liverpool, I see a more coherent side. I see more variation in the ways they can play. And as as much as like Mane and Firmino in particular have like disappointed this season, that is still elite quality that you have. And the chances of the chances of at least somebody in Liverpool's attack turning it on on the night are pretty good. Like they are pretty good. Do you so, think? Do you so think Liverpool's I, backline can stop this Real Madrid side scoring goals though? Like with Kabak and maybe Nat Phillips is going to play there or Fabinho. Um, I think I think Fabinho. Fabinho is probably the key. Like, I mean, it, you can you can also, if you have like an inexperienced back line, you can play a really defensive midfield if you want. Like, if you were to play like Henderson, Fabinho, Henderson, and Henderson's Thiago, injured though. Henderson's injured oh, for sh- both he games. is, isn't he? Yeah. But but if you had Fabinho, Thiago, and like somebody else in midfield, like yeah, it's, that's that's a, that's quite a lot of like defensive work and people being in the right mm. place. I um I don't worry about that too much because again, I don't think Real Madrid's attack is very good. Um. So, I, I I do think Liverpool, but I think it would be I think Liverpool are actually a lot better than Real Madrid, but um, I think that the actual fixture itself it will be close. Yeah, I this is gonna be this is too this is the toughest game for all of them to call. I think potentially other than Bayern PSG. Um, 
Oh God, I think I'll go for Madrid here. I think wow. that I think that that Liverpool centre back issue will get exposed again, Ooh. and I think without Fabinho in the midfield, Modric and Cruz might have a little bit too much influence on the game. Um, so I think I'll go Real Madrid. What are your thoughts, Jalab? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw like a Mohamed Salah show. Like I wouldn't wouldn't be too like out of sure out of a Liverpool team that's not been that great. He's been ridiculous still this mm-hmm. season. He's been very very good. Um, so I, I I agree with both of you that yeah it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a very close game. Um, oh, I wouldn't be maybe this could be a penalty shootout. It could go to penalties. Like oh, I, I, we haven't seen a penalty. I think I read something that there's not been a penalty shootout since the um, Real Madrid Atletico Madrid final. Uh, all, that, all that way back, so I, I wouldn't mind seeing one of them. Um, but yeah, I'll, it, it's really tough to call. I'll I'll go Real Madrid because I think they'll be easier to beat than Liverpool in the uh, semi-final. <laughs> okay, so <not> let's <laughs> talk semi-finals then. So Pat, Liverpool, Chelsea, you're having here as your semi-final. Two legs over two legs. Who are you going for here then? I say I, it, Pat. That's it's almost impossible to call, um, but I think I'd probably go Chelsea. Oh my god, Chelsea final! <sighs> yeah, I mean, like uh, it's 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 obviously possible not. Like, and at some point, Liverpool are going to pick up mm. again. Like, it's it's just not conceivable that they continue to play this badly. And to be honest, like as as much as they had bad results in the league, um, I don't think anyone thinks they deserve to w- lose all those games. Like, you know, most of those games were were, were pretty close though on the other hand i think the fact that they hadn't lost so much for so long mm. meant that when they did start losing games they genuinely had no idea of how to do it <laughs> like they, like they just they were I, I really think it was like a big shock I, i'm the shock last the person system. to talk about mentality but yeah i do think it was like a big shock to them i think they were kind of like shaken by it and i think you could see that on the pitch particularly at anfield what's that the but, first of first of april the first time pat, uh, pat said he's uh, he's he agrees with mentality april. yeah i know right but, <laughs> huge but but <laughs> But Chelsea, Chelsea are just good, man. Like, you're like, I mean, if if Conte's if Conte's fit for those games, like Chelsea, Chelsea just like absolutely like choke you to death. I mean, again, obviously, there's no there's no accounting for like Salah just going supernova. And I do think that there is a weak there's a weak spot on on the left side of Chelsea's defense, um, especially if they want to play like Alonso. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So, so, but, so I would, I don't really like to bet on it. I think it's pretty 50 50, but if you're going to make me go for it, I'm going to say it's 51 49 Chelsea. Okay, so Pat's going for a Chelsea Man City final. Oh, the ghost goal yeah. rematch. God, God I hope what, City what would you, win that. What are you thinking, um, should I have? For, for Chelsea Real Madrid? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think we've seen a lot of. I mean, considering Atletico Madrid at the top of the league, and we uh, and, and we've seen. I think I think Real Madrid beat them. If I'm if I'm not right, if I'm right in the league, um, but uh, you yeah, know, considering how we've seen the Spanish team perform in in Europe this season, it's not been great. Um, all of them, no. all of them, when they've had the chance to play, kind of uh, the the big boys in in maybe the Premier League or, or the Bundesliga or so, um, have have or PSG have have struggled. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, because of that, I, I, I'm the way that I just think defensively, we are ridiculous now. No matter whether it's Thiago. Go on, Jalav, say it. You're back in your voice. <laughs> or Christensen. Um, I would say, yeah, Chelsea to to beat Real Madrid to, to over two legs to get to the uh, Champions League final. Oof. So you're also going for a Chelsea City final. Mm-hmm. A Chelsea City final. God. Chelsea City. Wow. Okay, I think Real Madrid beat Chelsea uh, at the semi final stage. Um, I think I'm going to go for a Real Madrid Bayern Munich final. Uh, so I'm, I'm quite curve. different to the to the boys here. If so you, Bayern win that, obviously. Yeah, and Bayern Bayern retain their Champions League title. Um, that would be insane. That would be insane. Um, I think Bayern to retain their Champions League title, win the Bundesliga as well. Are they still in the Pokal? God, not clear. Mm, no, don't, don't care. <laughs> um, Possibly. The I don't is, think. Though. I don't think they are. I think they went out early doors. But if not, I reckon double for Bayern. Um, go on then. City Chelsea final. Presume you're both predicting a City win there. Come on, come on, mate. Yeah. 
It's, Chelsea it's Chelsea's win. Jalav's predicting a Chelsea win. I can't not say that Chelsea are going to win that final. Come on. Of course you can. No. What are you talking about? We get paid by the club, it? Pato. Yeah. <laughs> not just that as well. Yeah, but, that, but also, no, but, you can't but I also, the Yeah, but the, the club isn't North Korea. <laughs> like, you're, allowed to, you're allowed to disagree. <laughs> no, but I, I back the boys. I back the boys. Uh, look, Tuchel would have wow. learned. Jesus Tuchel Christ. would have learned from his experience of, you know, the oh my previous... God. Marcus Alonso, the, Champions Mar- League Marcus Alonso wouldn't start the Champions League final. But, um... He better not. <laughs> but I look, have he would have people that are currently typing out the word biased in the comments yeah, well, there you go. below there right you go. now. Do you have a response? Uh, look, I think too cool. Before that as well, before the final, we've got to play City twice. No, yeah, twice. We've got them in the FA Cup semi-final and we've got them in the league still. Um, That's interesting. So, you know, depending on how that goes, maybe maybe uh, Tuchel learns a bit more. We might lose both those games, but maybe he learns... Um, a bit more about it and about how how City play and etc cetera, etc cetera, and, and and uses that to his advantage in the in the um, final same the same way Pep could also use that to his advantage in the final if it if it works out that way, um, but yeah no I, I I believe I believe we could we could beat Manchester City in the Champions League final for sure they you know they've never been there before it'll be our third time we you know we've experienced. Okay, so we've got a Chelsea, a City and a Bayern Munich. All three of us coming up with different winners for the Champions League. Let us know your Mm. bracket results below in the comments. Who do you think is going to win in the quarterfinals, the semifinals and the eventual Champions League winners? Let us know in the comments below. Let's move on to some quick fire questions then. Um, Connor Evans says, How would Spurs survive without Harry Kane if he leaves next season, Pat? Jesus Christ! I mean, not not very well. Like, <laughs> like, like, they they would not. They would be bad. Like that. Yes. That's it's as simple as that. They would they would have to go and spend the money they got for him on a striker, and I just don't know who they could get. Like who would be conceivably a good enough level. Yeah. Like unless unless they thought that Chelsea maybe were like you know actually willing to sell Werner. Or maybe they thought they could get Tammy Abraham off them or something like that. Like, I mean, or they spent an obscene amount to get Ollie Watkins out of Villa. Like, I, ge- I genuinely don't know who they could get. Like, it just wouldn't... Do you think, do, they'd be do rubbish. You think Son could they'd play down the middle? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, he could. He could. But then, like, certainly I don't think they could do it with Mourinho. Go like, Mourinho, Mourinho's system has basically been to, like, force the third attacker to be really, really defensive. He could have just played Deli Ali this season as their third attacker, and they'd have been way better. But um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think I think Ali would have to come back in. Some would have to do a lot of heavy lifting, which at 28, you know, it becomes a worrying time to rely on him. Mm. Um, I think they'd have to go and spend an awful lot of money to try and to try and uh, bolster the attack. So it's it's one of those things where, like, generally, I'm of the opinion that like, if you can sell a player for like an obscene amount of money, especially over 100 million, you take it because 100 million pound transfers rarely work out for the buying club but it really depends who they think they could get to replace him because i don't like their options how much would you take for kane like if you were daniel levy what would be a a realistically good amount of money for harry kane do you think yeah i think anything anything over 100 um i think that'd be horrendous decision to sell him 100 mil his his value to Spurs is more than a hundred mil. Well, that's if you know if you're Daniel He's Levy, if you're of hitting if, if you're before. Daniel Levy, you're not selling him for uh, at least one fifty, one eighty. Because because he's contracted until them, I think, till twenty twenty four. So like, he, realistically, Kane's re- got no got no argument to, to to leave. Like, I don't see a world where someone spends one hundred and fifty mil, if not more, on Harry Kane, um, and. Yeah. And I don't see a world where if someone offers less than that, that Spurs accept it. Um, because both, especially in this coronavirus market, or the summer, maybe just after the, the coronavirus. Um, and then and then next season, if he, say, he does stay fit and has another great season, he's, what, 29, nearly 30 then? If he gets another injury as well during it, like he's not then going to be worth his... That, that amount, you, you would think. I mean, you know, play this back in a year's time when he scored 30 something goals in the Premier League. Um, but we'll, we'll the only see. way he leaves, right, is if he hands in a transfer request. Which... But what? I just don't think Daniel Levy would do no, that. No, I man. think they'll still say, yeah. they'll still say no. Uh, Daniel Levy yeah. doesn't f- just doesn't care. Why would he? Like, he's his player. Like, he knows that realistically, for 100, if he gets 150 mil <laughs> and they spend t- uh, half of that on two, uh, they spend that all on two players. Those two players, are they realistically going to get them what Harry Kane get, gives them? Probably not. Yeah, I, I don't just, know. It depends. I think it depends. I don't like, see any world in which he leaves Spurs this summer, though. 
No, neither do I. But I think like for like a hundred and a hundred and twenty plus mil, you could you could actually improve your team. Like I mean, I don't know if Mourinho's capable of doing it, but like mm. say you say say Kane went and they did bring in like Ollie Watkins, Pedro Neto, and somebody else. Like, is that a worse is that a worse team? I'm not necessarily convinced. I think the issue for Spurs would be if they sold Harry Kane, let's say a hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty million, is that they a bit like Man United will just get run up. Like oh, everyone suddenly it's an money, extra yeah. suddenly it's an extra twenty million on top of Pedro. Now it's an extra twenty million on top of Wally because everybody knows they're sure. desperately trying to replace. No, I, I agree, and they're not in the Champions League as well, yeah. so it's not like yeah. they can go. They can compete for Holland or or say right, okay, Kane's going to go, but we're going to get Sancho and Son will play through the middle. Like it's just not. Yeah. it's not plausible. Agreed. Uh, right, we got loads of questions about Sergio Aguero, so I'll just pick <laughs> out Max Nichols' is one. He says, "Is Sergio Aguero the best?" ever Premier League striker I don't think he is I think probably does breach my top five though um, mm -hmm. I think yeah. obviously Thierry Henry Wayne Rooney Alan Shearer um, and then we're looking at like Sergio Aguero maybe Luis Suarez maybe Andy Cole Ruud van Nistelrooy so I think he's probably in that sort of contention with Ruud van Nistelrooy I would say similar sort of level to that I don't know what you think Pat uh, I find it difficult because I, I'm just not sure I, I'm capable of like determining who's a striker and who's more of an all-round forward. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Suarez, Suarez and Henri to me are like different sorts of players and so is Rooney, really. Mm. Um, if we're comparing him to like out and out, like number nines, goal scorers, then yeah, he's probably he's probably in the in the top top three three maybe top three or four like I mean like Shearer certainly be up there I guess guys like Fowler as well Andy Cole Kane um and then and then Aguero would be around there yeah I feel yeah, Harry Kane totally forgot about him I, I <laughs> yeah I just think not doesn't quite Obviously Van Persie doesn't well. quite bring, breach the top three for me I think Henri Shearer and Rooney that top three is pretty solid and then he's in contention I don't know what you think, Jalab. Yeah, no, I, I, I kind of agree with both of you. I think Van Persie's probably up there as well. Um, he did, did it at Arsenal and United. Um, I mean, he's just just ridiculous as all he's done. It's probably been a bit sad the way his maybe last two seasons have gone for him um, with just injury after injury after injury. Like, I think he started like four Premier League games this season. Um, mm. and, and so he's been there for what, te this is his 10th year. Uh, so the last two seasons have been a bit rough, but he's been, he's been enjoying his Twitch streams, I'm pretty sure. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he's definitely, I, I'd, I'd put him like fifth for me, fifth for sure. I wouldn't say yeah, I'm going to bang him fourth, I think, for me. I think fourth for me. Um, he'll, he'll be fourth for me, yeah. Uh, let's do another one then. Um, this one from Emperor Typing says, which team would win? Man United with Pep or Man City with Oli? Pat. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Um, it's a good question. That it's a great of. question. United and Pep, I think. God. Do you? Yeah. I think that. I think Maybe. that in a one-off shootout, I think that that. Oh, in a game. Squad in not one City game. You've got. Yeah, in a one-off oh, okay. game. Oh, okay. I've, I was in that league. Maybe then Ollie. It's not really gonna. But it doesn't really mean anything, right? Because like. You put Oli in charge of Man City now. They're not going to like just change style overnight. Like obviously, there's loads of stuff there about how they play that's been determined by Pep. Like I mean, all right. They've, let's say they've both been there a year. Doesn't mean Pat. anything. They've both been there a year. Same squads. They've gone through <laughs> 30 games of a season, and then they meet each other on neutral ground. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I think both. I think I both know. could literally beat each other. I just think it just depends on what happens and. Like, <laughs> what happens in that 90 minutes like does one get a penalty luckily it's 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 it's, it's basically it's, like the, the question really here is like is the difference between pep and ollie bigger than the difference between city and united yeah like that's the question right and like it and uh, no city is way better than united like the squad is a million times but united squad is not all that no like, I um, ollie does seem but, to be pep's kryptonite though yeah but that but that's that's a different question as well, mm. right? Yeah. To, well, yeah, if you think yeah. that's the case, then like, then Ollie with a better squad, like, is definitely going to win. Yeah. So Jalab, you, what that's, you've yeah. just said there, you basically side with Ollie. Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, it's yeah, a fair play. Ollie, Ollie, you, <laughs> Ollie, you've won it, mate. <laughs> Ollie, you, you sided with Ollie. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I think Ollie would probably win as well. I think the squad is that is that much better than Manchester United. Like, I think Pep um, mm -hmm. would need quite a lot of work to get. Like that backline passing, to keep being able to pass the ball. I can't imagine Aaron Wambasaka doing particularly well in the Pep Guardiola system. Uh, 
put it that way. Um, okay, let's let's do a um, personal question then. Top three soft drinks from MC. Oh, it's good. Uh, three soft drinks. Top, top three. Okay, so Coca Cola is definitely breaching top three. Yeah, 100%. for sure. For sure. For sure. Mm, An ice maybe. cold Coke. Don't pat. There's it's no way okay. you cannot include Coca Cola. You always. No, I'm just. No, but I'm just debating whether I, uh, because I might include cherry coke, whether that pushes oh, coke down. Oh God, I do love a cherry coke. An ice cherry coke cherry is coke. so good. It's really good. Um, I'm trying to think what I want to say. I, I do like a Fanta as well. You know, I think Fanta is actually criminal. No, wow, which no one? Chance. Which one? Don't reach anything. Uh, a Fanta you say fruit, orange. A Fanta fruit twist is brilliant, and a Fanta. Ooh. Oh no, Fanta, it's disgusting. Fanta, a, Fanta, Fanta great. A Fanta lemon Ooh. when you're on holiday is unbelievable. No. Yeah, Fanta lemon Fanta is good. Fanta lemon gives me indigestion. I'm yeah, putting well, that's, that's your fault, mate. Get a better stomach. What about creams? What about cream oh. soda root beer? Oh. I love both of those. Get them in the bib. Uh, I'll be honest. Oh, I, I, no, I've, no, I've no, only no. had like I think I've only had like, like twice. Um, oh, they're so good, man. I tell you what, I'm putting up there. I'm ranking in my top three is a Vimto. Oh God! Nah. Yeah, of course you'd like a Vimto, nah. Jamie. It's got it's got the it's maximum good, sugar no. levels possible. I think I might go classic Coke, Vimto, and this one just to throw a cat amongst the pigeons, a Red Bull. Oh God! Disgusting. You and Red Bulls. Red Bull's disgusting. It's Pat, do you remember disgusting. when he used to have to, he used to have a Red Bull every day, or an I'm apple so, I, I, an apple tango? I find, I've got an apple tango in there. Ooh. I find Red Bull an embarrassing thing to drink, honestly. <laughs> no, that's monster. The, yeah. No, the people who are drinking energy drinks before they go to their job, which is sitting at a desk. Like, get <laughs> it's it. just calling out get, Joe. It's just, just calling out Joe. Just calling me like, out. 20, 2017 task. Joe would be for you. It's the same way that I like coffee, but you know when some people are like, oh, I just can't get anything done in the morning before my coffee. Like, <laughs> grow up. Come on. Um, okay, I've just changed my... After Pato's ridiculing, I am changing to <laughs> Apple Tango, Vimto, Coca-Cola. What about Apple Tizer? That's better oh, than Apple Tango, is no, it not? Apple Tizer's Apple, too... Apple Tizer... Too, uh, I, I sparkling it's, water for me. It, it's too hard to find as well. Like, I, I would agree with you, Pat, if it was readily available. I, I only ever time I see an Apple Tizer is in a pub. Like, I, I'm okay, not fair seeing enough. Apple I mean, elsewhere. A little... I feel like I always see Apple Tizer in the supermarket, but I feel like I haven't seen an Apple Tango since the 90s. <laughs> like, that's... Just go to London. That's kind of... That's kind of where I'm going. Tango's with this. in every every corner shop. Oh, what about what about London favourite Ting? Ting is so Ting, good. Right? It yeah, is Ting's good. Ting, fair, yeah, little little something amazing. But do you drink Ting like as a singular or is it just a better mixer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got to say it's been a long <gasps> time since I've had a Ting that didn't have tequila in it. Miranda, yeah. not is it Miranda? M M no. Miranda oh. Hart. No, not Miranda Hart. Oh my god, what, what the orange drink. About? Yeah, it is Miranda, mate. It is Miranda. Yeah. Mirinda. You're getting, Was it you're getting the chicken shops. Mirinda. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's up there for me. Mirinda. Um yeah, I'll go Mirinda, Fanta, Coke. They're they're my three. I, I mean if you add the Algerian soft drinks in there, which have still got none of the Ill the legal stuff in the UK, God, they're up there as well. I cannot remember what they're called. They've got Arabic on it. Unbelievable. I assume we're not allowing like things like you know chocolate milk and stuff in here. No, it's like fizzy, yeah, fizzy, drinks, no, fizzy drinks. Yeah, fizzy drinks. Okay, good, 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 good. Come that on, does, Pat, that what's your top three then? Uh, I'm gonna go cherry coke. I'm gonna go wow. specific. I forgot one. <laughs> um, oh, I might go grape Fanta. Oh, that's sickening. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go. Oh God, there are so many contenders. I'm between normal coke. Root beer, cream soda, oh. Dr. Pepper. Ooh. Nah, Dr. Pepper's okay. Too fair. It's all right. Dr. Pepper's great. Uh, I'm going to go root beer. I love root beer. Wow. That's rogue shouts. So good. No, no yeah. shouts for Lucas so Aid in there either, by the way. That's because Lucas Aid. Lucas Aid. Exactly. Lucas Aid Sport. Yeah. The, the, the berry Lucas oh, Aid Sport's really good. Yeah, it is actually. So good. Big shout. Power Aid. We Power Aids or anything. No, let's stick with what we've got. We're, we're sticking if you, with If you want your brand at number drinks. one, though. Pay us. Yeah, and sponsor then, Sunday yeah. Vibes and we can comfortably yeah. put your Agreed. brand front and centre we'll at it. all of these sort of answers. <laughs> we'll have it on the side here and just be drinking. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, if you have a contact at Vimto, please <laughs> smash the like button and hit me up. It I'm is good it. though. It is. You are right about Vimto, but I guess I don't buy the pre-mix. Like the, 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 the squash Vimto is amazing. 
Oh, mate, the cans of Vimto. Oh, if you get on ice cold, it doesn't get better. Um, but anyway, uh, let's wrap up the show there. Pato, what was on the uh, pod this week? Oh, God. I don't know. No, it was... Uh, it was Doogie and I were talking about um, one player that each of the big six should sell this summer. Ooh. And while Doogie was trying not to court controversy, we did end up in controversial territory. <laughs> you said Salah, and- didn't you? No. <laughs> you definitely I said, did. I said, Bo- I said Bobby yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, Bobby wow. Yeah. I bet one of you said oh, Pogba. Uh, I said Pogba. Okay. Well, go and listen to that podcast if you want to hear more from Pat and from Doogie. Jalab, anything from you? Uh, why don't you check us out on Snapchat? We will give you a story about football every single day. Yes. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.